This NFL Week One Picks Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted parlays to in-game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a one thousand dollar risk-free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now, or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap, America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. That's PropSwap.com promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by PicksWise. PicksWise is the number one app for free sports betting picks, props, and parlays. Download the free PicksWise app now to make your next bet better. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Are you the best football better in the United States? Odds Crowd challenges you to prove it with their free to play fantasy betting contests. Over 30,000 up for grabs over the season. Go to oddscrowd.com to sign up. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app. SGPN is giving you a chance to win $100,000 NFL Week One exclusively on the SGPN app. Woo! Welcome, everyone, to the sports. Gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking that money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Let, let me just get it out of the way early. All <laughs> right. Kramer is. Let's uh, go. He's rocking the Danny Dimes jersey. Very, very uh, interesting. I, I'm rocking the uh, Reggie White jersey. Of course, we are live again from the Blue Wire Studios in the beautiful Win Las Vegas. And uh, it is it is awesome. We're here hanging out. We got it. We got the local uh, news crew here checking us out, Ryan. So if you see some uh, cameras popping in on the video, don't worry. Just making local news. I'm sorry. I've been telling you I'm good looking for a while now, Sean. <laughs> now it's official. I was called a sharp last night. Yes. I'm, I'm now good looking enough to be on the television and, tonight and, and in Las Ryan Vegas. Ryan is of course referring. Uh, we had uh, the Win Senior Trader on. It was a, it was a cool segment talking NFL where the money was at. <laughs> <laughs> little college football. And of course that was our college football picks episode. Check that out. We also got the DFS uh, picks episode out of the way that dropped a Monday. And uh, we are just going head first into NFL week one. Before we do a couple, a uh, couple things to get on for Kramer. Do you realize this is officially our 10 year anniversary wow. of doing the podcast 10 years? I, it started, I didn't get you anything, Sean. No, we, we got each other. Nothing. We planned <laughs> nothing. And uh, shout out to the audience for uh, supporting us all, all uh, 10 years in. Did they remind you it was anniversary? Cause I, I no, I did not. You remembered on know, your own. Uh, yes. I don't know <laughs> what the 10 year anniversary is. I've remembered the NFL picks. Uh, there have been moments where I forgot my own wedding anniversary. So <laughs> hopefully my wife doesn't listen to this. Oh, you remember your podcast anniversary, oh, no. but not our wedding anniversary. Oh no. So 10 years ago, we debuted the sports gambling podcast so far. Uh, it's, it's a crazy journey, crazy ride. So shout out to all the DJs for riding with us. And uh, man, just ready to go NFL week one. And oh. of course we are brought to you by win bet. If you haven't gotten over to win bet yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. $1,000 risk free sports bet. And they're even, they're even making it a little bit uh, easier for you here. They got this triple the spread promotion on select games each week. Kramer, you won't believe it. Dallas, Tampa, the Thursday night kickoff yes, game. Please. They are tripling the spread. So instead of getting eight points with the Dallas Cowboys, you now get 24 points. I'll be honest. I still like Tampa Bay laying 24. Maybe I'm an insane Homer, but at 20 at plus 24, I, I think <laughs> I'm not, I'm you'll never hear me say picking Dallas on the podcast, but uh, kudos for win bet for uh, giving you these uh, sweet opportunities to cash big. And make sure you check out the NFL week one props episode as well. We hit on a bunch of the uh, exclusive props that only win bet has, including some of the combined uh, player prop markets, the uh, rookie rushing or rookie passing leaders, uh, sophomore passing leaders. There's a, there's a bunch of fun ones in there. Make sure you check out that episode as well. I think that's it, Kramer. Oh, and uh, one more thing before we actually get to the picks. Shout out to the person who dropped a uh, one-star review on the Apple podcast feed. You suck. This is, this is, I, I love, this is a fun uh, segment here where we review the uh, reviews. <laughs> this, but their review is it, it, trash. 
it's trash, but also I think it could be an advertisement for our show. Mm. The subject says too much clowning around, oh. which who, who writes that? As, <laughs> this is written by like a seventh grade. Uh, <laughs> it's written by a seventh the... grade teacher, maybe a gym teacher. Too much clowning around. Immature adolescent sound effects. They come across as high school boys just winging it with their picks. Hard to take these guys seriously. Lacking intellectual professionalism. If I saw that review, I'm subscribed to that podcast. I'm sorry. Is intellectual professionalism <laughs> giving you a $200,000 DraftKings lineup? Yes. I'm sorry. Is intellectual professionalism giving you Bubba Watson to yeah. win the master all, Masters all those years ago? I, yeah. You know what? I, I think we yeah. were intellectual professionals when we gave out people the first half unders in March Madness, going uh. a whopping, what, 24 Seven and one against the spread, or even the preseason unders. All right, I mean, you're welcome. Do you want? Yeah, what sort of egghead professor is going to give you the first it, half unders? It March could Man? be the the guy that you, you kept hitting your baseball into his yard when you were a kid, <laughs> like the, the the true get off my lawn guy. Literally, not, not the guy that we pretend to be sometimes when we fire up the lawnmower sound effect. Or the but. guy that Colby actually is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's Patty do it. C had a great line. He goes, if Colby is such an old man and cranky like this, imagine when he's actually an old yeah. man. What world are we going to hit? It blows my mind all the time that Colby's younger than me. Okay, Kramer, let's get to it. Of course, all the lines you can get over at mm. winbet.com. This is where these numbers are coming from. And our NFL week one contest, it locks Thursday night. So make sure you get those picks in for your chance to win $100,000. Just download the SGPN app. Uh, pick all the games against the spread and a couple totals there. If you go undefeated, you win $100,000. It's just that easy, Kramer. Have you filled out your entry yet, Sean? Um, I have not filled out my entry yet. I don't know if we're actually eligible because I don't read any paperwork, but I, I'm definitely going to fill it out after we record this podcast. That's on my to-do list. All right. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's first pick 16 games against the spread. Let's go, for the baby. 10th. For the tenth straight year, <laughs> find me another show that has been picking games ATS for the last ten years. A lot of lot of new gambling shows shows oh, yeah. showing up to the new, block. A lot of new gambling shows. Oh, what's this? We can talk about gambling now. We need a gambling <laughs> podcast. Well, we've been doing it for ten years, so let's go. Ahead Sean. of market, let's go. What? Yes, we can. Let's go. All right. Uh, all right. I, I, I'm sorry that we just dropped the ball. First fumble of the season. <laughs> Thursday night football Kramer forgot that he does it spreads in my head. I thought you were going to do something, but I realized you already talked about the win Thursday night football five twenty here on the West coast. Dallas heads to Tampa Bay where the Buccaneers, they're going to be raising a banner. They're going to be celebrating minus eight minus four twenty five on the money line. Dallas plus three twenty five fifty two is the total Sean, this Dallas team. They were six and 10 last year. 5 and 11 against the spread. Tam meanwhile, Tampa Bay 11 and 5, 9 and 7 against the spread. Figured I'd remind the D-Gens who was winning the money and who was losing the money. Dallas. Oh, you're just some crazy homer who fades the Cowboys Dallas. every week. Well, uh, yeah, uh, it went 11 and 5. Our method was great last year. It was the worst against the spread record in the National Football League. Congrats. So, congrats, Dallas. So, with all of that said, I'm sure you're going to give me some reasons, some actual objective reasons why we're not going to take the Cowboys and why we're going to take the Super Bowl champs on the night they raised the banner. Well, I, very obviously, uh, you should have got down when we did our week one early reactions podcast because this number opened up at six, even six and a half. It, it's gotten up to eight points as people have come to their senses <laughs> as they realize. They watched Hard Knocks. Yeah, they, they watch Hard Knocks. <laughs> they see Mike McCarthy. They're like, oh, well, these guys are enjoying luggage. What are they doing <laughs> on the field? For, let, let's start with the checklist. Let's uh, do it. Uh, uh, completely objective analysis. Super Bowl winners, six and one against the spread that first game. You think, oh, it's a letdown spot. They're going to be looking at their shiny ring. Tom Brady already has a bunch of shiny rings, okay? This guy does not get distracted. He's dialed in. He's ready to go. Their defensive line against the Cowboys' offensive line. And this is a matchup I love here for the Tampa Bay Bucks. And it's a, it's offensive line and offensive line injuries or offensive linemen who are on the COVID list. That's, a, that's an angle I'm going to be harping on this podcast and for the NFL season, Zach Martin is out. That yep. is huge. Zeke himself 
said that Zach Martin is their best player. And it, and I clearly most, he's, mo- most and that's, people. that's on unobjective analysis from Zeke. He, you didn't see him getting Zach Martin, any luggage. Oh, I mean, I don't think they're BFFs. Maybe no. they, maybe there's a BFF love triangle there in Dallas <laughs> that we don't know about, but yeah, Lael Collins, he's coming off an injury. He just started practicing Dak Prescott. I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. We watched that injury, but we didn't even get to watch that injury. It was blurred out. That's how grotesque yeah. that Dak Prescott injury was. He didn't have a full preseason to rehab where well, he was trying to, uh, you know, just hey, make, hey, uh, hey. make up for the fact that he had that bad ankle. He threw out his lat. His lat was strained. No preseason work, no live reps coming into the season. And then you look at the, just the matchups, Tampa Bay's defensive line is going to dominate. They already had a very good defensive line that carried them to the Super Bowl. Yeah. We saw what they did to the Chiefs offensive line and they added to their strength drafting Joe Tryon, who by all accounts has had an awesome preseason and and really I, I look for Joe Tryon to have an impact on this game. Tom Brady finally oh. 180 and 119 against the spread oh. since 2003. <laughs> I, I, I'm having trouble making a case for the Cowboys. Maybe they backdoor this thing, but Tampa Bay is is gonna be dialed in. How, how do how do the Dallas Cowboys cornerbacks cover Godwin, Evans, yeah. Antonio Brown, Gronk? They they have no answer yeah, for these Bucks, matchups. Bucks were five and three against the spread when they threw for more than 387 yards last year. Uh, a game that profiles to be the same this year. Did you mention that uh, Dakota Rain Prescotts uh, against the spread record last year? No. Because everyone's like, he's back. It's going to be fine. He's back. They're going to, they oh, weren't good with that. Oh, and five against the spread. If you include <laughs> the game, he, he broke his leg. So uh, yeah. And I, one of the notes I wrote down was literally like, did you watch hard knocks? Like, because I, I, how are you buying into this team? McCarthy it, had to tell the trainer to go bring Dak into to, to, to start treatment. I it, mean, was, it was it was one of those weird things where it's like, are, are, am I going to do it? Are you going to do it? You're in charge. You're the head coach. Oh, I guess tell so. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, last thing I'll say, that is Sean. A great Mike. McCarthy how many? He's a potato head. We need a Mister <laughs> Potato Head to put a Cowboys hat on. It's Mike McCarthy. That Sean. mask is just hanging on for dear life, for Mike <laughs> McCarthy. <laughs> Sean, uh, can you name the three teams in this millennial that have lost? After winning the Super Bowl opening night, straight Ooh. up. This is teaser consideration here. Teams that have lost straight it's up. It's happened three times since the clock has turned to the year 2000. My, my instincts want to say Giants, but probably. Giants it, were one, Super okay. Bowl 46. Okay. Uh, Ravens? Ravens, Super Bowl 47. Wow. Two, the two last one's the easiest, too. I, I know you're going to get it. Oh, man. Patriots, Super Bowl 51, when they came out and got shellacked by. The Chiefs, and oh, we were asking ourselves, yeah. oh, is, is Tom Brady end? done? Is, yeah, what, that's, we need a separate bet on that. When will we have the is Tom Brady conversation? Is Tom Brady done conversation? Because yeah. we have it every year. He shoves it in everyone's face. When will we have it this year? And, uh, you know, last thing, I guess. To... Their offense, he, they, they struggled early, but their offense looks so my, good towards the end of the season. My favorite part about every NFL picks show for week one is how deep we go into our nuggets <laughs> against the Cowboys. When yes. in reality, if you watch this show, we're not picking the Cowboys, but not a lot of good reasons. Last thing I'll say, Super Bowl winners uh, coming off, hanging the banner, 13, six and two against the spread in that same 18, 18 and yeah. three. And it's even, three. it's even better recently, but you're right. It's, it's been good for a while. Yeah. And then, you know, just, just one thing to note here, like Sean mentioned, I think the secondary for Dallas is going to be a problem. And so, you know, one of the receivers is going to be underpriced. It could be an Antonio Brown. Yeah. It, it could be one of the tight ends. So uh, you, I'm looking to play and not to get too deep in this, but it is Thursday night. I am excited about football, but I am looking to play. I think both Antonio Brown and Gronk to score anytime touchdowns. Th- those are fun bets and make sure you tune in tomorrow. We're going to be live again at four 30 Pacific. Nice little uh, pregame show. I'm sure we're going to have More one of those giant sheets and just, you know, going through first touchdown, Check. player props, Check. over-unders. So uh, we'll, go. we'll go hard just for the Thursday game tomorrow. Stay tuned for that. All right. So we're both taking the Bucks minus eight. <laughs> We, did, we literally could have said nothing and still got to the same conclusion. Tampa is in consideration for a survivor pick right off the bat. Oh, wow. Yes. And also in consideration for a teaser. All right, let's move to Sunday, 10 a.m. Pittsburgh heads to Buffalo where the Bills are laying a full touchdown now, Sean. Minus 300 on the money line. Pittsburgh plus 240. 48 and a half is the total. 
Uh, this Pittsburgh team, everyone seems to have forgotten, but they were 11 and 0 last year. Finished 12 and 4, 10 and 6 against the spread. Buffalo 13 and 3, 11 and 5 against the spread. One of the best ATS records in the league. Uh, a couple things to note, Sean. We have a revenge angle here. Uh, Bills defeated the Steelers 26 to 15. Uh, other than that, I know you're going to bring up the fan narrative with the, this Buffalo team. The only kind of outstanding question, and maybe something happened in the last couple hours, but TJ Watt. TJ Watt is, he did his first practice. Yeah. So that to me signals he's going to play. By all accounts, TJ Watt is going to play. If TJ Watt doesn't play, that obviously is huge for their chances. That being said, this is crazy that it's gotten up to seven yeah. points. I love the Bills. I have the Bills winning the Super Bowl. I think they're a really good team. I, I think having the home crowd will be huge for them. However, Pittsburgh is a good team. Yeah. Ben Roethlisberger looks healthy. He's slimmed down. I think they're going to be able to move the ball. Najee Harris is going to get a massive workload. We've talked to our, uh, our Bills insider, the Donna Bills Mafia, Adam He's worried, Pelletier. He's worried about Fryermuth having a decent game. I yeah. think they're going to be able to move the ball, and they're going to be able to get enough pass rush against the Bills to make this interesting. And it is a revenge spot for the Steelers, a team that just doesn't get embarrassed a bunch and they're just a solid team overall. In the Tomlin Roethlisberger era, they well win coached. games. They win games, and most importantly, they cover spreads, especially as a dog. This is crazy. Pittsburgh, <laughs> as an underdog since 2018, 17 results. Kramer, guess how many times they've covered? All of them. <laughs> no, that is a horrible guess. 14 and 3, though. Ah, it may close. as well be all of them. I'm close. Come on. I, I, you really I, looked at me shamefully with that guess. That was a good <laughs> come guess. On, you could do better than that. Well, I thought you were going to have some hot take. All of them would have been. The, 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 the Steelers offensive line maybe still has some issues, but they're going to be in this game. And, and a seven point spread with Ross Roethlisberger, with those dynamic pass catchers with Deontay Johnson, Mapletron, who I just love saying his nickname. It's a great nickname. They're going to be in this game. I, I don't see Buffalo covering seven. That That's where things get wonky. Well, also, I don't, I know we don't like to talk about it, but. Um, the Buffalo offense took a massive step forward last year. Uh, we don't, we didn't speak about it a lot, but you know, could Josh Allen come out and do Josh Allen things against an elite defense that averaged three and a quarter sacks per year last, last year? Absolutely. Now I do think TJ Watt's going to need to be on the field to be yeah. a part of that. Maybe rushing the passers like running back, you can just come out of a holdout and be fine. Maybe he plays a couple few fewer, fewer I, he, snaps. I mean, he looked in shape and say he's, he strikes me as one of those guys who's not sitting around getting super but, fat. Yeah, I just think that the Josh Allen outlier season, outlier jump from year two to year three last year could maybe, maybe it shows up early in the season. But I, to your point, seven points is way too many. I think every year we have these moments where we forget how good NFL teams can be. Yeah. We, we watched preseason where we saw nothing from defenses. And we're but gonna, but we're, we did see Big Ben look pretty decent. Well, well he didn't have the offseason elbow issues this this year. <laughs> so he got over that. that and, you know, it's, it's a real addiction, Sean. It's an it's addiction. Real, uh, but, but I think more, it's just I think we're going to see some teams that roll out really good defenses that people seem to forget what a good defense can do. And, and to me specifically against the pass, like this could be a Josh Allen, multiple turnover game. Uh, money line is potentially in play here as much as I'm I fearful of the bills winning five in a row at home. And, but and all you, that, could, but. you could see maybe the bills getting sleepy week one, let a, you know, lose a game to a very good Steelers team. I, I, I think that's certainly in the realm of possibility, but especially with seven points, an entire touchdown with the Steelers team is way too many. And, and I, I can only imagine, and I haven't mentioned the, the split of the money, but I can only imagine money must be coming in on the bills to push this. That's this crazy. Cause I, I was looking at this number at six and a half the entire week. I think it opened even at like six. It's slowly creeping up. Well, yeah. I'll happily take these three points. I, I, well, so far we're lockstep. That's that, that can be a danger. Good thing. That can be a good thing. All right, next up, we have the Sam Darnold revenge spot. Carolina minus four and a half hosting the Jets. Minus 240 on the money line. Jets plus 190. 44 is the total. Uh, this this Jets team was trash last year, 2-14, and 14, but they were 6-10 and 10 against the spread, Sean. Carolina was 5-11, and 9-7 and seven against the spread. Yeah. So two teams that both overperformed to the spread last year compared to their actual record. It does seem like... Um, and maybe I'm just influenced by the fantasy community, but it does seem like uh, the Jets is one of these teams, like the Jaguars. We forgot they won a combined uh, three games last year where we're just like, oh, yeah, they got these players. They're fun. It's like they're just going to have offenses. Uh, not so fast. I mean, 
I think it's scary probably to lay this many points with, with Sam Darnold. Yes. And maybe that like, watch, watch imagine watching <laughs> Sam Darnold last year and thinking, Oh, that's a guy I want to lay five and a half points. With. I'm so scared to do and, it. And, and you said it's four and a half. It was as high as five and a half. I, I'm surprised to see the line moving that way, but uh, yeah, four and a half. I'm still, and this is maybe I'm getting a little too cute early mm-hmm. in the season. I, I've done that before. Well, we I, can, we've I been thinking are, about this for four you months. The, you are the good looking side of the table, but oh, maybe you. I'm getting a little too cute. But to me, I'm, and it's weird because I like Carolina overall as a team, but I am worried about their offensive line. Their right guard, mm. he's on the COVID list. He's going to be out. Cam Irving is not a amazing left tackle. And I think what I like about the Jets is Robert Sala. Okay. I, I'm high on Robert Sala. I think he can, and again, one of the other reasons why I think maybe is slightly it? below market on the 49ers, Robert Sala can scheme up some uh, a pass rush here on Sam Darnold. Now, I know Sam Darnold, Robbie Anderson, possible revenge game here, but you look. Possible. Yeah, and you look at the line play. I actually have uh, the Jets offensive line as the better offensive line. Mekhi Becton. Had a couple hiccups in the preseason, but last year he looked like a pretty legit left tackle. They drafted Elijah Vera Tucker, building the team the right way, which some New York teams have had trouble doing. I I, I think maybe the Panthers do have a chance to to make a jump with their defense. Uh, we'll see what J.C. Horn does. He he's looked uh, pretty solid in preseason. One, but really the last reason why I'm going to take the Jets is Carolina is surprisingly a public team this uh, week. One of the top five uh, most bet teams. And, and that was at five and a half. So I don't know why there, there's got to be some sort of a reverse line movement that's going on here, but I I'm all in on the jets catching anything four and a half, five. I would even wait around and maybe you find a six in the wild Ryan, but I, I I'm on the jets here. I'll throw in one nugget. Cause I, I, I thought I was going to be hot coming in here, taking the, taking the jets. Here's what I'll tell you. I think the public narrative has it wrong. I think there are situations to fade rookie head coaches, fade rookie quarterbacks. Yeah, worth worth mentioning for sure. Getting more than a field goal is not maybe when to to do that. Rookie head coaches in their first road game, 32 and 51 uh, straight up since uh, over the last 20 years. But 49, 32 and 2 against the spread. So, So the angle, and if you then take games out where they were, the point spread were three or less. It jumps up to 69%, funny enough, against the spread, nice. which, which tells you what? That these teams uh, are being inflated because people are running to go fade that situation. Yeah. And when, they, when they're getting enough points, you know, they can keep it close. So you're, ta- you're saying rookie head coach on the road, if they're getting three or more, actually look to take Over them. three. Over three points, you want to look to take them. I so think three and a half. You're three good. and a half or more. All right. Look at my chops. Licking your chops. <laughs> uh, and, and I think, uh, you know, it's Carolina. They're, they're Carolina's a fun team. They were a good team. They went 9-7 and seven against the spread last year, but they were a dog in a lot of those situations. And it's easy. It, covering spreads is one thing, but winning games is, is a different thing. And then covering a number like four and a half, five. Uh, look, I, I went back to last year, and I said, we just can't. We can't start the season laying the points with Sam Darnold. I, I no. know I, I might have done that earlier in the offseason. I've come to my senses. We're going to take a stab. Because to your point, of the rookie head coaches, Sala is definitely the guy at the top of the list for me. Well, I think he, I think he can scheme up something that's going to give Darnold enough trouble. And, you know, the total, again, not a big totals guy, but sitting at 44, I think the over is in play. I, I think this could be like a 31-28 type game. I wouldn't, I'm not loving the Jets money line, uh, which usually you would when you're taking the team as a dog, but four and a half does feel too high. And and for those, I I know we said Sam Darnold revenge spot earlier in this episode, but I mean, that, that is a funny thing to think about, right? (laughs) Imagine Sam, maybe it's a revenge spot for the defense who had to deal with Sam Darnold. Well, yeah. What does Sam Darnold's revenge look like though? (laughs) I mean, I, I don't know. Anyway, let's move on next game. We're going way too slow, Sean. We always do this Jacksonville at Houston. Oh, my Texans, Tyrod Taylor coming out of the tunnel, plus three, plus 140 on the money line, minus 160 for the Jags, 45 is the total. I'll, I'll, I'll lead off again, Sean, uh, rookie head coaches who are favored, who are Ooh, favored, favored, yeah, on the road. Since 2014, one in four ATS. Yeah. 
the last guy to, to, to overcome it, Freddie Kitchens, for what it's <laughs> worth. But then you sprinkle in the rookie quarterback as well. Yeah. The last rookie quarterback to be favored week one. Jacksonville Jaguars, 2003, Byron Leftwich. <laughs> it's happened three times since the merger. This is not a situation you are and running know, to the window I, for. I know everyone's out on Houston, and, and for good reason. But come on, the Jags won one game last year. Yeah. We're already hearing reports about how Urban Meyer, he doesn't really like the fact that the players have so much power. Everyone, <laughs> everyone got annoyed that he brought in his good buddy, Tim Tebow. That, I mean, we're going into game one, and it feels like Urban Meyer already has his foot out the door. He sees, oh, Clemson lost the game. Oh, what's going on? Maybe, uh, maybe Dabo's on his way out. I, I just don't. I mean, <laughs> The, the shelf life for Urban Meyer as a head coach could be comically, comically short. If you if you had to pick one coach to leave in the middle of the night and just put out a note that says, sorry, I'm going back to college, one coach that has you know heart palpitations and can't coach for the rest of the year, it would hands down be Urban Meyer. He retired with a broken heart. Yeah, exactly. Let's never forget that. Tyrod Taylor, the starting quarterback for the, the Texans, he wins games. I know what you're saying. Oh, they had a really good team. No, they were, they were bad in Buffalo. And he grinded out efficient passing, efficient games where he didn't turn the ball over. He checked down to the right guys. It's not fun. He's not going to win you a, a playoff game. He has no ceiling. He's a man. The floor is the ceiling. Yeah. He, he's sleeping under the stars, Ryan, because he has no ceiling as a player, but he's got a very rock solid floor, which I don't know what you can say for Trevor Lawrence. Did you, did, well, yeah, I mean, we, we need to see if Trevor Lawrence is a true alpha. Did you think that Tyrod, uh, thought he would ever get a chance to start a football no. game again after the chargers and, medical and staff stabbed went, him in the lungs and last he year went out. They, the, the medical staff did him dirty. He was robbed of that opportunity. They went and uh, you know, they won a game on the road against the Bengals yeah. last year. And he was one to know as a starter last year. How does that happen? I mean, obviously we know the answer. Herbert comes in. <laughs> Herbert looks amazing. Yeah. He's the, he's the rookie of the year. You wouldn't start a uh, Tyrod over him. That's why they drafted Herbert, but come on. You don't think he's got a little fire in him. And David Coley seems like a, a player's coach. And if there's ever a get up game yeah. on this Texan schedule, this is their, this is their goddamn Super Bowl. What How? other game are they getting up for? It's a division game against the worst team in their division at home week one. It, it, we're the only people who have some optimism as, as Texans backers. But if you're, this is the only game they're going to be, this is the Cully, lowest spread of their entire season. Cully might be a simple man who can't pronounce analytics, but he can show his team one in 15. And the reason they had to, they got to draft that quarterback. Let's go Texans plus three. Last thing I'll say, uh, they are one of the teams. Now I don't know where you're getting your, your, your data from, but the, one of the most lopsided bet games, really? Jags. No, the, the Jags are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we like to fade the public. I mean, FTP. when it's TP, when it, it, I mean, it, it drove the number to three. So, all right. Arizona, Tennessee, uh, in Tennessee, the Titans minus three, minus 155 on the money line, Arizona plus 135, 52 is the total. I think a lot of people think this is a game with no defenses. I just don't understand how this is a three point spread. These are not even teams on a neutral site. Uh, this is one no. team that is a cohesive unit that has had winning success on the field versus another team that is coached by Cliff Kitchens Kingsbury. And, you know, they weren't even that good last year, as Sean's about to tell you. No, and, and, and they really kind of fell off a cliff once uh, Kyler got banged up. I mean, their, their wins are, are inflated by that, uh, you know, Hail Mary played to DeAndre Hopkins. But really, they're they're the Cardinal secondary is really bad. Uh, they lost uh dark quest Denard. Uh, he's on the RIR. Then Malcolm Butler decides to randomly retire to the point that we were like, wait, what? He retired. The Cardinals are starting cornerback Byron Murphy, who hasn't played since 2018. Aww. I was all over them in my DFS lineup and I'm all over them here for the game. They, they play well at home. They have Derrick Henry, Julio Jones and AJ Brown are going to eat with Ryan Tannehill at the helm. I think this could uh, game script wise be a little bit of a shootout, but I, I, I just don't think Arizona can compete. You're taking a non-conference. Uh, you're, you're fading a non-conference road game here for Arizona. They're going on the East coast. 
Tennessee of the two teams, I'd rather take Bud Dupree. I know he's coming off an injury, but you know, the, the cards brought in JJ Watt, which the name sounds great, but the guy is kind of he first ballot hall of famer, but his better days are behind him. I, I don't think Under he's going to be able to provide a, a massive pass rush here in the Titans. 27 and 16 against the spread in non-conference home games. Tannehill is a solid quarterback. He's battle tested. And if Kyler Murray is actually going to stick to his guns and not run, then I love this game even more. Even if he runs a little bit to get them back into the game, I I think Tennessee, uh, I just don't see how they don't put up 35 on this Arizona team. And if they do that, how do they not cover minus three? Yeah, I guess it, it comes down to like, I guess people are maybe galaxy braining, braining the uh, exit of Arthur Smith. Maybe they're high on Kyler because he got him a lot of fantasy points. Uh, I honestly like the, if we were guessing what the numbers were going to be, I think I'm even on record saying this earlier in the offseason when I told you to get two and a half. I thought this should two be. Two and a half felt like a trick. At least three and exactly. I think we said it was a trap. At least three and a half. I mean, again, on a neutral field, I don't think these are even teams. Tennessee is a team. I get it. They don't have a good defense, but their offense can carry them. They break whatever. Let's move on. It's a. This was one of those teams. This is one of those games where, as I was doing the prep, I'm just like, I this this number is maybe three points short of where. Yeah, it's and and it seems like one of those games where it's so obvious, but the fact that it's a trap. The fact that it's up to three, do you have the, uh, do you have the money splits, Ryan? Cause I feel like for us, it's really obvious, but I think enough, the public is going to be on Arizona that it won't end up being as trappy as we think. I mean, it's like 55, 45. I mean, it's a it's little It's in bit. the mix. All right. That's, that's all we need to know. Which tells you that the move, you know, what is the move about that? Maybe, maybe they were just expecting one thing and people are, are wising. I don't know. I, I think people are, you know, you have fantasy is huge. Now I think fantasy has the ability to influence betting more than ever. You have a lot of new people joining the betting, uh, the betting window from fantasy. And I think, you know, fantasy hype is real. So fantasy hype is real. And so is the hype with big wireless carriers. They sell you, Oh, Hey, it's going to be easy. Don't worry about it. And then there's always some fine print where you end up getting ripped off. When I heard uh, Mint Mobile is having mobile plans for only 15 bucks a month, I thought there's got to be the catch, but there is no catch. In fact, there's secret sauce. That right, that's right. Their secret sauce is that they don't have retail stores. How do you eliminate overhead costs, Ryan? By getting rid of those retail stores. They don't have to turn the lights on. They don't have to hire a bunch of people walking around. They don't have to. You know how much a sign spinner costs in this economy? <laughs> Mint Mobile doesn't have that. They know it's a waste of money. They pass the savings on to you. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. Text and talk, high-speed data, all unlimited on the nation's largest 5G network. And Mint Mobile, best part is you can keep your same phone and your same phone number, all your contacts. You won't notice a difference. And if you do and you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service for just $15 a month. And you get the plan shipped to your door for free. MintMobile.com slash sports SGP. MintMobile.com slash sports SGP. Cut your wireless bill to, to just 15 bucks a month at MintMobile.com slash sports SGP. And while you're saving all that cash, you can, you can take it over to WinBet, get down on some of those bets, or you can enter all the uh, free contests over on oddscrowd.com. That's right. They're giving away $30,000 in cash prizes for both season-long and weekly fantasy betting contests. Of course, the free roll football contest where they're giving away $10,000 to the best NFL uh, picker against the spread. Sides and totals are included. 3000 up for grabs in the college one and the weekly SGPN exclusive contest where they're giving away 100 bucks each week. Those are uh, separate contests, so make sure you enter them all. Again, oddscrowd.com, download that app, enter your picks. It's very easy. They even have a social aspect and track your picks. So uh, check them out, oddscrowd.com. Sean, for those who've asked, because it, it, a lot of people blowing up the DM, sliding in. Mm. You know my DMs are always open, Sean. Yes. They want to know. Like Devonta Smith. Like Devonta Smith. Where, are, uh, where, where is the free roll football content? Yeah. Over Odd, on oddscrowd.com. Oddscrowd, baby. Just click the NFL season long one. You can't miss it. Very easy to navigate the app. Very easy to use hundred yeah. percent behind it. And uh, also easy to use. Maybe not so much. Justin Herbert, Los Angeles <laughs> chargers. They head to Washington to take on the football team. 
plus one for the football team at home, minus 105. Chargers minus 115 on the money line. 44 and a half is the total. Ah, boy. It's another one of these uh, rookie head coach favored on the road week one. Danger. Danger. This was one of the... Uh, it's this only is, one point, though. So This is one of the games where I was just excited to watch. I'm excited to, to uh, have an eye on it and on one of the nine screens where I'm sure we'll be watching. Oh. Here, here's where I'm at, though, Ryan. And we see this every year with the Chargers. You were uh, planting your flag on Chargers. I was a little more pessimistic <laughs> because they're always cursed. Oh, no. They always figure out a way to mess things up. This is and our year, Sean. Right before we went live no. with the show, Austin Eckler dealing with oh, a no. hamstring. And that, I, I was kind of thinking maybe go Chargers. But the Eckler hamstring thing, even if he plays, he's not going to be 100%, which is a huge uh, pain in the ass, and and it's actually a decent matchup because, and I said this before, this is how you how do you how do you deal with um, how do you how do you mitigate a pass rush, Ryan? Mm. You check it down to the running back, get them involved in the screen game, so that's really going to hurt. You're saying he's with important. Eckler dealing with a hamstring issue. You got Rashawn Slater, rookie left tackle, going up against Chase Young. That's definitely a uh, advantage for the Washington football team. It's a massive test for the Chargers offensive line. Curtis Samuel, it, it appears he's not going to go, but I, I think this is going to be a good game. But you, why is Washington a home dog? This feels like it should be mispriced. And this is Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. That's a crazy non-conference road trip. You got to take the uh, home dog here. It feels like it should be WFTs maybe minus three because it feels like these are two relatively even teams. You can build a case for or against them pretty, pretty easily. But why are they not getting that minus three for a home field? I know FedEx is in a great home field, but where's the courtesy minus three? <laughs> They're the football team, Sean. Look, I, as much as I love the Chargers, this was another line we talked about in the offseason. It's just trappy as all hell. I mean, it's it's so easy. Like, who is not seeing this in the public and like, oh, I love the Chargers. Look at that I, offense. I, I, and honestly, this is a nightmare because I have Austin Eckler in a number of DFS lineups. Oh, no. You can't play DFS in the state of oh, Nevada. No. Now, normally, Ryan would be the guy I would text and give my DraftKings login to or, you know, whatever DFS site and tell him, like, okay, here's what you got to do to switch the lineup. But now, the thing I dread the most, walking my wife through, fixing <laughs> my fantasy lineup remotely, not looking forward to that. I may just avoid the conversation and hope the hamstring's okay. But betting-wise, you got to take the WFTs. Kramer, are you on the Chargers? I know they're your Chargers. Yeah, but again, I think I, I really like the logic behind the idea of not fading a rookie head coach on the road as a favorite. Like, I understand overall why the rookie head coaches have a good ATS record because a lot of them are taking over a dumpster fire yeah. and they're catching a lot of points and maybe yep. they get that first game bump. I just think you highlighted all of the reasons why this non-conference road spot absolutely elite defense uh, defenses are ahead of offenses early in the season. Uh, I'll stick to that. And what what else do we have? Did you did you mention the coaching? Yeah. Because uh, there's a there's an element of this game that has uh, newfangled Brandon Staley, Sean McVay, look at my shaved chest <laughs> uh, type of coach, and Ron Rivera, a football guy who wants to shove a guy like uh, Brandon Staley in a locker. So I think on many levels this this is this feels like a good time to to pop on the football team here. I, are you worried about Curtis Samuel? I, I don't think so. I, no, I, think we I mean, might. I, I think Terry McLaurin, I Logan lo Thomas, J.D. It. McKissick getting involved in I, the passing game. And, and this could be a nice little Deami Brown game. Maybe yeah. he pops. Maybe he's the big waiver. Ad I mean, I, I was, I was shorting Curtis Samuel, uh, you know, in fantasy best ball. I was not having a lot of shares of Curtis Samuel. So I'm not shocked or uh, bummed out about that at all. All right. Next game, 10 a.m. Still on the West coast. We have Philly. Your Eagles, Sean. Fly, Eagles, fly. Let's go. Heading to Atlanta, at where the Falcons are minus three. Minus 165 on the money line. Philly plus 145. 48 is the total. This number was bigger in the offseason. Clearly, people three are Three and a half. They listen to the show. Clearly, people are getting excited. They know how important offensive and defensive lines are. Excited about simple systems. Excited yes. about a quarterback that completed 52% of his passes yep. last year and uh, excited about uh, Sean, honestly, like tell me why the Eagles are an even team to the Falcons here 
on a neutral site. I just don't. Because I, I mean, again, you know, I'm a guy who handicaps the offensive and defensive line. You got got Let's handicapped. Go, go to go to establish the runs uh, rankings. They have <laughs> oh, sharp stuff there. Defensive line, they have us fifth. Offensive line, they have six. Let's look at the defensive line of the Atlanta Falcons. 31st mm, in the good. league. They're not going to be able to get a pass <laughs> rush against Jalen Hurts. You give Jalen Hurts a bunch of time. Nick Sirianni is going to scheme up a simple system for him to yep. complete some simple passes. Yep. Quez Watkins will get one deep shot. He will connect on it. You will see me chirping on social media when Quez Watkins pays <laughs> off his $3,000 price in DFS. And on the other side, the offensive line of the of the Falcons, I think is susceptible to this Eagles pass rush. Again, our offensive and defensive lines are healthy for the first time in a very long time. And you're right, Ryan, I am high on a man by the name of Jalen hurts. Now you're, you're throwing some shade to his stats. Let me compare uh, another quarterback and his rookie year stats. 1201 yards, six touchdowns, three interceptions, 695 rush yards, 4.7 yards per attempt running the ball. And that was in seven games. Jalen hurts 1,061 yards, six touchdowns, four interceptions, 395 rush yards, 5.4 yards uh, per carry there. You know who that other guy was? The first guy, Ryan Lamar Jackson, his second year, he went on to win the MVP. Give me Jalen hurts MVP at 80 to one. Stop it. Sean. And let's fucking go. We're in this nice, this very nice place and you're embarrassing yourself. I, I, I am I'm comparing honestly, Jalen hurts to Lamar Jackson as a physical specimen. No, Lamar Jackson is a freak. And I, and I think he's probably a better runner, but I think the Eagles offense is probably in a better system uh, or in a better place than, than the Ravens offense was the second year he took it over and, and they schemed up a perfect game for or a perfect season, a perfect offense. And I think Sirianni is going to come in and do that. Eagles are 35 and 24 against the spread as road underdog since 2005. The Eagles do well when there's no expectations. I dusted off that stat about them, you know, in seasons where they have less than eight wins on the win total, they exceed expectations eight and three when they have a win total of less than uh, eight, they're going to exceed people's expectations. And I'm just out on the, uh, Falcons as a whole. I, I'm again, I, I do think Kyle Pitts and Ridley could get theirs, but I think ultimately the line play will be the deciding factor. So confident in them. He's wearing the Jersey of a retired man for those Reggie not watching. White? Brian, for to the- call him a man is, is spitting in the face of Reggie white. He is a legend. Okay. Reggie white, the minister of defense. I apologize. And yes, I'm channeling the spirit of the minister of defense because we're going on a sack parade, the leader in NFL sacks. Let's go. Although, uh, you know, your boy got a cheap one and, and that's why he had the uh, season long episode, uh, <laughs> season long record. So you, you said a lot of things that were positive yes. for the Eagles. I, not worried at all about the secondary against this Falcons team. I, I, I mean, if you're listening to the show, Ryan, nope. I did say I am a little worried about Ridley and Pitts. I think mm-hmm. they get theirs, but I think they're able to hold them enough. And our, and our, our linebacker play is a lot better than it was. The There's handy- no Nate Gary on the team. That is a massive upgrade. Alex Singleton is a Canadian beast. Yeah. I just, I don't see this game being a low scoring game. That's it's like completely settled in the trenches. And, and so I, I just don't see how the Eagles keep pace if this out Atlanta offense is scoring. I, I've, I, I'm obviously not fading all the teams in the division. I took the football team. I just think in this spot, uh, I was looking to already uh, take the Falcons at three and a half. Uh, once seeing the preseason and seeing the um, shakiness of the, the defense for the Eagles, it gives me a little bit more confidence that a team like the Falcons specifically should be able to exploit what they have. And so obviously I'm going to lay the three here, Sean. This is a crazy number. No, you're, fine, you're way fine. too take high the, on take the, Eagles. the Eagles plus three and a half. You can find a three and a half if you do your work. Oh, here we go. Or maybe just, you know, buy a half point at Winbed. Okay. 10 a.m. Seattle heads to Indy. I feel like this game has been played before week one. Indy, the Colts plus three at home, plus 130 on the money line. Seattle minus 150. 50 is the total, Sean. Carson Wentz, he's, he's migrated west. He's now the quarterback <laughs> for the Colts. He brought his curse with him. Russ has uh, hired a new general manager for his, for his kitchen, and he will be hopefully cooking to start the season. I don't know. Like, obviously, we're, I, I think we're both like kind of Team Russ here, Team yes. Unlimited. And so, uh, I mean, I guess maybe you want to throw out some real objective reasons why, why you take the Seahawks Well, here. one, I hate Carson Wentz. He's a coward <laughs> who asked out of Philadelphia. We don't want you, Carson Wentz. 
and he's, he's busy tweeting about ducks. You know who's actually going to be hunting ducks mm. on Sunday? The Seattle defense. And the ducks are going to come from Carson Wentz <laughs> and his wobbly noodle arm because he, he's, he's coming off a broken foot. He's coming off being on the COVID list. He has no rapport or chemistry with any of these receivers for the Colts. They're going to be able to load the box against Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. That, that's really, and again, coming back to the offensive line in, issues. Uh, Quint Nelson, who we are a huge fan of uh, on the program, very good offensive lineman, worth drafting as high as they did. He didn't practice. He didn't practice Wednesday. He's dealing with a back injury. He also is coming off that foot injury, the same foot injury that that uh, that Carson Wentz had. I don't know if those are things are contagious. They're, they could be missing Xavier Rhodes, one of their best cornerbacks. He's day to day with the calf injury. And really, the big hole is at left tackle. Anthony Costanzo retired. Eric Fisher, who's coming off an Achilles injury that happened late in the season. Yeah. It happened in the playoffs. And now he's coming off an Achilles injury. He then he just got put on the COVID list. He's one day off the COVID list and the Achilles injury. It seems like they're rushing him back to play week one. And, and maybe he plays, but if he does, I can't imagine he's going to be that effective. And then give me no. Jamal Adams on the other side. He he Jamal Adams really found his stride late in the season, sacking quarterbacks creating turnovers. I'm very excited what uh, Shane Waldron brings to the Seattle offense. And the Colts are kind of cursed week one, 2013 was the last time they won an opener here. I, I think, I guess maybe you talk yourself into the home dog with the Colts at plus three, but you can, you know, get that two and a half either way. I'm super high on Seattle. And again, Russell Wilson, the same reason why it takes Seattle win a total over every year. Russell Wilson wins games Winner. since 2012. 85 and 69 and six against the spread 21, 15 and 12 in non-conference games against the spread. The guy takes care of business. What's what's not to like about Seattle. All right, let's add, add a couple things. One, uh, which one of these teams to you profiles more as a team that's going to excel on turf? Well, it's Seattle. Uh, people that hate on Jamal Adams and the contract and all that, like, cool. Look at the way that he was deployed in this defense. Once they figured out what his strength was, he had how many sacks last year, Sean? As many as really good defensive linemen. Yeah, no, he and I think he was close to setting the record. For, I believe he did. Uh, def, uh, yeah, for defensive backs, a nine and a half, and, and and so especially in a game where you're going to have an offensive line deficiency, you have a Seattle team that has in the past found ways to get pressure, and you have a quarterback who, when he is pressured, is willing to make bad mis bad decisions yeah. and and turn the ball over. Uh, you have an opportunistic defense when they've been at their best. So perhaps uh, Carol and the boys can have them do that. But most importantly, I'm just bullish on the idea that if they really Russ was pissed off, just as pissed off as some of these other quarterbacks that were making news and everything's cool now. And part of what's cool about it is Russ sees what the game plan is going to be. Yeah. And that game plan is on board. Involves They're going to cook. Cook. give him a little gas. Let him cook at least early. <laughs> Till he, till oh, there's gas, a couple, no till, the, till the defense gets tired and he, they turn it over and Pete Carroll gets scared of new things. Full disclosure: Seattle is a bit of a public uh, ro oh, short road yeah. favorite, and yep. hopefully you got a better number in the off season. We've been telling you to take this number. I think we were telling you to take it when Seahawks was still the Seahawks were a dog. Yeah, so. I I think there was a point where Seahawks were getting plus two and a half, and <laughs> and we were we lost our mind. What world are we living in, Sean? All right. Couple more games in the early slate. Love week one. So many games to watch. Minnesota heads to Cincinnati. Minnesota minus three, minus one seventy five on the money line, plus one fifty five for the Bengals. Forty eight is the total. Joe Burrow. Everyone's expecting him to come back. Just fire and Jamar <laughs> Chase. Look at all that chemistry they had. No way they should have taken an offensive lineman there. And this is a game with a heavy amount of money coming in on the Vikings. And another yeah. very lopsided game. So it is lopsided, but Ryan, it's lopsided for a reason. If, if, if Joe Burrow doesn't trust his knee and he's, he's basically said that in reports, why should I trust Joe Burrow's knee? If Joe Burrow doesn't trust it, why should I trust Zach Taylor? Six twenty-five and one straight up as a coach. When you got Mike Zimmer on the other side, 68, 48 and one and 32, 26 and one on the road ATS that's 68 and 48. That's his ATS record. And, and, and sure, the Vikings, they have some issues with their offensive line, and they didn't look as sharp as they normally do in preseason. I know I, I, I had them a little bit there, but I think the passing game is just going to eat. Right now, the Bengals are starting 
uh, Chitaboy Awuzi, and Eli Apple. Wouldn't you? Is it Justin Ooh, my, my Jefferson going to have friend. a big game? Eli Apple. So, and and then even Dalvin Cook, Cincinnati was 29th in rushing yardage allowed last year. This, I, I think it's going to be a, a, I, I just Minnesota is such a better t- team and better coach. Didn't we see this matchup week one last year? A uh, team that profiles to be much better, maybe a good offense uh, on the road. Mm. It, it, maybe it's, it's a team even that's uh, been known to choke a little bit, been known to, to not show up. And then you have the exciting Joe Burrow in that first home game, even yeah. with the bum knee. Maybe he's playing coy. Maybe he's getting you on the rope, Sean, making you think. Could be. I'm st- I do believe that you know it, it is a little concerning. He came back awfully fast. But the market's telling me something here, Sean. I think we take the Bengals here. You didn't mention non-conference road spot. It's, I didn't. It's that. It's Kirk Cousins. Like, who knows what kind of controversy and You're distractions. You're on the Bengals, Ryan. Who knows what kind of distractions all this plexiglass construction <laughs> uh, in the Minnesota Vikings facilities, man. It, it, it does. It, and maybe, you know, as we're picking these on Wednesday, maybe something late happens with him in it's, the protocol. It, it's one thing to choose to not get vaccinated, whatever. It's another to suddenly become uh, like a construction GM and start talking about how <laughs> him, we can be him more. Des- him describing <laughs> how he was going to put a plexiglass case around his locker. It just <laughs> I just imagine those late night gas stations where they they just speak through the thing and they won't they won't give you your change. They'll just slide it through. The little, the little... I, I, I think you're getting cute here, Ryan, with the Am Bengals I? plus three. Okay. You're right. It is a non conference road spot. I'm just so out on Zach Taylor, and I like Joe Burrow, but the knee thing really worries me. I will look. This is definitely a game. I'm not running. This is more of a lean, a lean for me. I, I just think that you have sometimes you have to take the gross one, Sean, because you know how it works. I mean, perhaps. Oh, I have some gross dogs here. I, th- this feels like a gross one, and I, I there's at least reasons for me to get excited about the idea that they could keep up and attract me if that's what it becomes. All right. I, I don't think it becomes a track meet because I, I think the Cincinnati offense is going to be out of sorts. All right. I think I mean, maybe both teams are to that point. All right. The last of the early games, San Francisco heads to Detroit to take on Dan Campbell, Anthony Lynn, <laughs> and the, uh, the knee butters of the North plus seven and a half at home, home dog here, big home dog plus three ten on the money line. Niners. Minus 400, 45 and a half is the total. Oh boy. I, I, I do. Everything tells me, everything tells me we, we should be taking Detroit in this game. Yep. The public's all over the Niners. Yep. The fantasy communities are all over the Niners. Yep. Kyle Shanahan is still a genius, which by the way, I didn't bring it up, but the Robert, Robert Sala being a Kyle Shanahan disciple <laughs> didn't even come up in your Jets handicap. Yeah. Uh, man, how do, all right. Is there even a case for us? Noted Kyle Shanahan haters, noted, noted lover of football guys, not a lover of Jared Goff sucks Island. No, but this isn't about Jared Goff. And now I know he is the starting quarterback for the game, but this game is not about Jared Goff. It's this game is about Jimmy G being a seven and a half point road favorite. They drafted Trey Lance because Jimmy G isn't good enough. Mm. Kyle Shanahan told you Jimmy G is, isn't good enough by trading up to get the third round, the number three pick overall, and, and to get someone who's not Jimmy G. Like, what more do we have to show you that he doesn't believe in Jimmy G? If he doesn't believe in Jimmy G, I don't believe in Jimmy G, and I don't believe in Kyle Shanahan without Robert Sala there to carry the water and make that defense look oh. amazing. Do I, do oh. I, am I all in on de- the Detroit Lions? Sure, the Detroit Lions have their issues. Uh, being really uh, so scary, yeah, you know, sucking horribly and being really <laughs> shitty is certainly one of them. Penny Sewell has struggled in the preseason. That's a bit of a red flag. Um, but again, this to me is home dog. Detroit, if there's any, if there's much like the Texans, if there is one game, Detroit's going to get up for, it's probably this game, maybe the, maybe one of the division games at home, maybe the Thanksgiving game, they always lose and don't cover on Thanksgiving. I think they, this is the Jags uh, Colts game of last year where everyone has San Francisco in their survivor pick. Everyone thinks San Francisco is just going to crush and then Detroit maybe surprises people. I'm just not in on the San Francisco team to the point that most people are. Now, 
it's crazy again. Like they drafted a quarterback in the top five and their win total was still 10 and a half. Something doesn't add up. Something smells fishy. Give me Dan Leach, football guy, catching seven and a half. There, and, and I think also. I like your slip there, Dan Leach, football guy, Dan oh, Campbell. Yes, Dan Leach is our friend in Detroit who is also a, a, a big football guy uh, and a local uh, radio uh, guy and VEASAN guy too. Does a lot of stuff, so make sure you check out Dan Leach. But I, I think there's going to be a lot of boring handoffs in this game because I think the Lions <laughs> are going to feed Jamal Williams and I think the 49ers are going to feed Mostert. Uh, a little concerning Jared Goff's performance against the, uh, the the Niners in the past. That's always uh, a little concerning, but maybe it's a McVay thing. Sean, uh, if you had to guess who covered more games last year, the Lions or the Niners? <laughs> oh, that's interesting because hmm, I, I feel like maybe the Niners were catching some numbers there. I, I'll say Detroit. They tied seven and nine. Oh, okay. Had the same ATS record. Come on, guys. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I, I think in a way, I, I was trying to find a reason to be on San Francisco because I, yeah. I do feel like it could be an, an absolute monster, like smash blowout. It could be a blowout. Dan Campbell certainly might a pro- not be a good coach. a possibility. Uh, but uh, someone noted this, and I don't, I don't remember uh, who it was, but Anthony Lynn always came to the table with an offense. Yeah. And Jared Goff has had He's an a, offense before. The fact that so, he made the Chargers offense look kind of decent. I, I know he's horrible at, uh, you know, game planning and calling timeouts, but, you know, Dan Campbell is going to be on his, what, 90 ounces of insane caffeine, and he's going to be ready to <laughs> go. I, 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 let's do it. Let's, let's both. T- I, I don't know if I could take the money line here. Cause I just don't see, <laughs> I mean, there is the element, the ugliest dog on the board. Find Sh- me an uglier shout dog. Shout out to Jake pay Quinn, Sean, in the YouTube chat, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast, point out that Jimmy G uh, has to get this win narrative or he might, <laughs> it might start being uh, Trey Lance time a little earlier. Picks wise, Ryan, it's the number one app for sports betting picks helmed by a team of trend watching data devouring sports fanatics, giving you the who, how, and why behind every prediction for every game, every day, and every sport loaded with best bets, props, and parlays. You can find in-depth analysis on every game all for free. Found your pick, uh, search through the latest sports book promotion, sign up an account, and get down on some action. Download the free PixWise app now to make your next bet better. PixWise backs responsible gambling. A gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER and uh, check out the PixWise app. Also, PropSwap.com. You mm. getting those win bet tickets? I know I'm gonna I'm gonna carry some home back to uh, <laughs> Los Angeles. If uh, you know if one of these look kind of good, I may go on uh, PropSwap.com and list the ticket there. That's the fun thing about PropSwap. You don't need to have your bet win so many times you've had these season long futures bets where you go, Oh, it looks so good. looks so good. I wish I could hedge PropSwap.com is a perfect hedging opportunity. You can buy and sell real sports bets over at PropSwap.com. They got the brand new site. They got a loyalty rewards program all in on loyalty rewards. Make sure you go for two, give yourself two tickets. One you can sell, give yourself a nice little profit there and one to hang on so you can just sweat it out. Get started today by going to PropSwap.com or download the PropSwap app. PropSwap, it's where America goes to buy and sell sports bets. And, you know, one more shout-out to the chat because there, there's a full conversation about the price on Jared Goff Sucks Island going on right now. So <laughs> now that it's moved north, the, uh, apparently it's still $69 an acre, Sean. You'll, nice. have, you'll have to confirm that for us. All right, moving to the afternoon slate. We get four. Cleveland. Heads the Kansas City Browns Chiefs Chiefs minus six minus two eighty on the money line. Browns plus two thirty fifty four and a half is the total. Sean, we have a Super Bowl hangover situation. <laughs> As our friend Alex in Kansas City will tell you, the water there it cures hangovers. It has so far. Will it this year, Sean? No, I, not ready. I'm I'm all in on uh, I'm all in on Kansas City here. I. It is a revenge game, you would think, for Cleveland, but I think it's more of a revenge game for the Chiefs and how bad they looked in that Super oh. Bowl. Patrick Mahomes, when favored, not by double digits, 23 and 12 uh, against the spread. Chiefs are 21 and 10 against the spread for season opener since 1971. And our boy, the the walrus in the Hawaiian shirt, Andy Reid, six and two against the spread opening week for Kansas City. He's one of those guys that thrives on having extra time to prepare. 
And I know Kevin Stefanski, coach of the year last year, but I still think Andy Reid is the guy to beat. I'm buying the hype. Coming that, off a buy. <laughs> yeah, coming off a buy. I, I'm buying the hype that Kansas City has figured out their offensive line issues. And I think they, I, I think how close the Browns played them in a way is, is, is motivating this Kansas city team. I'm high on their, them fixing their offensive line. You know, on the other side, I'm not, you know, you everyone, fade the everyone, Browns. everyone seems to be loving the Browns. They're going to have a, you know, they're going to be in the AFC championship game. They had them going really far. I'm just not quite as high on the Browns. The classic case of they won a lot of close games. They brought in Jadavian Clowney. He's dealing with a mystery illness, which that's uh, spooky. <laughs> I think actually on the defensive side, now Cleveland doesn't have a horrible defense. I think Kansas city will be able to get theirs, especially Travis Kelsey, a rookie, a rookie linebacker for the Browns. Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa told the media he's ready for Kelsey, oh, no. which anytime a rookie calls out in a really awesome player, he looks good too. He does look good. And I, I think he will be solid, but you know, first ever game in real NFL action. Give me, Travis Kelsey, give me Patrick Mahomes. And I, I think people are going to say it's a gift that we were getting this at minus six. Cause there are some people that are going to talk themselves into taking Cleveland as the dog. They're like, wow, they're an AFC super bowl contender. And then they're getting six points. No, Andy Reid, week one. And, and going back to Mike Zimmer, Mike Zimmer, also one of those guys that does really well with extra time to prepare. All right. Uh, real quick. How many times has Patrick Mahomes uh, not cover the spread week one. Zero. Zero. Let's go. Uh, here's the other problem, though, Sean. What? How many times has the Super Bowl loser covered since the year 2000? Um, four, since the year 2000? Four times. Four, four times. And four and 17. All right. So don't, don't factor that one into your handicapping. Just factor all the positive Kansas City ones. And, you know, honestly, the Browns narrative, uh, I, I think they're going to be a fun team to take at home. I think they're even going to be a fun team to maybe take at home uh, early in the season after they get shellacked by the Chiefs. <laughs> I've got enough shit from our Chiefs fans. I'm on the Chiefs this week. I, I think to your point. Uh, They've broken you, Ryan. Well, I mean, we, the number tells you the story, right? They're getting public money on Cleveland. People know the narrative about Super Bowl losers. Maybe the Chiefs are just different, right? Like, I, I, I think it's just more that they're just people are high on the Browns. The Browns, like the 49ers, have kind of been dubbed the, the, the teams in the conference, the kind of hype teams. And Does yeah, this I line get it. to seven? Yeah, probably, right? It could. I mean, if it's at six and people are still taking the Browns, it could, it could get as high as seven. I mean, that's... I can't imagine. I, I, can't... I mean, if people are still taking... But it sounds like you said the public's on, on Cleveland at six, so I, I don't think it gets to seven then. I mean, we'll see, I guess. I'm, I, I guess there's also the world where how do, how do people not, you know... I think late, the closer we get to kick off, you're going to see some Chiefs. Moves. Let's go. Teasers and all that good stuff. Next up, Miami heads to New England, 125 on the West Coast. New England minus three, Sean, minus 155 on the money line, plus 135 for the Dolphins. 43 and a half is the total. It's Tua, a guy you're not super high on. Nope. Off to the road. We know Miami wins this game when it's in Miami. Bill Belichick at home. Yep. Obviously, he sees a potential Week one. win. But he is starting a rookie. I think it's going to be a defensive battle. We know Bill. Bill does well against his guy, his former guys. He does. He he really. Bill Belichick does really well against his former coaches. Now Brian Flores is probably the best one of his former coaches, Second head and best. shoulders. And I I think you know it might be a little a bit of a game early. But again, going back to the offensive line, establish the run had the Miami Dolphins as the thirty second ranked offensive line that was before they lost their left tackle. Austin Impressive. Jackson, who's on the COVID list. Will Fuller suspended Adam Shaheen also on the COVID list for the dolphins. You got Tua coming in who averaged 6.3 yards per attempt. And then you got McCorkle on the other side. The same reason I think new England is in the mix to make the playoffs. Their offensive line and defensive line have a chance both to be top five. They got some of their opt outs out from last season, Dante Hightower, Patrick Chung, they're both coming back. I think New England's offensive line is going to give Mac Jones enough time, a.k.a. McCorkle, to make some easy throws, not turn the ball over. And I think they're going to get a pass rush on Tua. And I think it's going to be very easy for McCorkle because they're going to be giving it off to Damian Harris, uh, giving it off to Stevenson, setting up the play action. And Miami's defense, we kind of hit on this on the preview uh, in the preview podcast and check it, check those out. Still plenty of time to download the uh, division preview pods. 
but Miami's defense was kind of a paper tiger. I, I, I like their defense, but really it was built on this unsustainable turnover differential. Like they really turned people over a lot. You look at the actual yards per game. They were 22nd in yards per game defensively at 251 and a half, but really quietly. Their rush defense on the road led up 132 yards per game. If you're giving those kind of angles to a Bill Belichick team, they got the fans back at uh, Gillette, which is normally not a rocking place, but I think they get up for this. Uh, the Patriots fans are drinking the McCorkle Kool-Aid. I think they, they, I really like them in this spot, like a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it is, it is one of those spots where it's a little hard to see why um, New England's got, not getting more respect. Uh, and I think you can see uh, the, the influence of Wynn's uh, presence in that, in New England, because <laughs> I, I think this number in the wild is still, you know, sitting at two and a half in some places. So I think people are going to be, get cute about this. I think they're going to say, I want to fade the rookie, not thinking about how two is basically a rookie here too. And if, who, who better to give a master class? I mean, you don't think Belichick versus Tua is a matchup you want to take Belichick only laying three. Yeah. And, and they, they won this game last year. They opened up at home against the dolphins one 21, 11. I could see a very similar game playing out this week. The, the, the Patriots and the dolphins just win their home games against each other. That's yeah. the way it works. It's pretty easy. All right, Sean, 125 on the West Coast. The Denver Broncos, they're heading to New York to take on Danny Dimes. All rise. And the New York <laughs> football Giants, plus 135 on the money line for the Giants, minus 155 for the Broncos, who are minus 342 is the total. Sean, I wanted to, like, just off the top, did, so it, maybe you can explain. Bradley Chubb hurt his ankle, failing to appear in court. Is that what happened? Because <laughs> it sounds like he might be out, which is a check in the uh, area of the Giants' maybe shaky offensive line. Yeah, and, and Bradley Chubb, it sounds like it'll be a game-time decision. That's never good. We're taping this Wednesday. He showed up for practice. I think he was in pads. He stretched with the team, and then when they went to do individual stuff, he went in to get work done. Kramer, you were saying it uh, off air that, listen, the, the, this is week one. They're going to shoot these guys up. They're going to be good to go. The guys that are on the bubble usually play week one. So as a guy who's definitely going to be on the Denver Broncos, I'm not going to wood that uh, Chubb shows up because okay. that's going to be huge. Either way, I'm so out on this Giants offensive line. True, you are. And I think Daniel Jones is going to fumble, which is it's a pretty easy <laughs> prediction to, to have considering this many games into his career, second all time in the NFL for number of fumbles. He led the league in 2019 and 2020 in fumbles, despite only playing uh, 12 games in 2019 and 13 last season. On the other side, you have Teddy Bridgewater. Why they give the keys to the car to Teddy Bridgewater? Cause he plays a clean game. He doesn't turn the ball over. They're going to lose the turnover battle, the giants. And I don't mm. think their offense can overcome that. Kadarius Tony, uh, you know, your buddy, Kenny Galladay, they were dealing with injury and COVID issues all preseason, all training camp, didn't have any time to build chemistry with Daniel Jones and Barkley is still limited in practice. So you're high on him uh, coming back and having a massive game. I think they still limit his touches a little bit, uh, especially early. Uh, look, here, here's the way this game shapes up. I think you can look at the offenses if you want. You can get excited. You can you can say what Sean did. They, the chemistry, maybe that's a problem. Yeah. I, I don't I don't disagree with that. I do. You know, if you want a tip on the offense for me, it's it. I I think Sterling Shepard's going to be open a lot in this game, and I think they're going to use Barkley. I think it's all been a, you know a, a charade. They're, Barkley's going to be out there. Barkley's going to get so most, Gettleman playing four D chess with the people, or he's just an old man getting fed stuff by Joe Judge, who's the puppeteer at this point. <laughs> this is a defensive battle. And in defensive battles, generally you'd say, hey, take the points. Both these teams have questions on the offensive line. Both these teams have a, 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 what looked to be, the Giants at least, a, a very good pass rush. Uh, some of the guys they were missing last year, Lorenzo Carter, he's healthy. He was popping off the rookie, Ojolari. He looks like he could be a guy. Uh, we got uh, the X-Man coming. The, the pass rush is going to be there. The back end could be the best in the league, Sean. Uh, so if you're telling me Ted, Teddy Bridgewater is going to come in here and shred them through the air, get out of here. It's going to be a game where they're going to have to win on the ground. I trust the Giants' defense. Both of these teams' elite defenses, you'd say you take the dog in a defensive battle. The total is only 42. And you know what? I'm going to buy into my guy, Joe Judge. 
I'm going to buy into some of the creative assistants they brought in from college that Jason Jason Garrett Garrett? has learned his lesson. They're going to deploy (laughs) Kadarius Toney in a way, week one, that's going to have me jumping out of my seat. (laughs) All rise. One of the NFC's teams will be 1-0 this week. After this week, it's going to be the New York football giant, Sean. Danny Dimes is going to run a little bit. He's going to use his legs. They're going to have some more creative <laughs> stuff going on in the offense. <laughs> giant, I, we're, we're going to be talking it? about this culture that Joe Judge has built, this defense, when they shut this team out. Oh, that, you're calling for I'm a I'm calling shutout? the shutout. <laughs> Giants win. What, 2 17 0. Okay. I, I will give you an actual score, <laughs> and it's 17 uh, 7, Broncos. Okay. So you kind of copied my score and then just added a seven. Understood. All right, let's move on. No, no but I have the Broncos winning because that's, that's what's <laughs> going right. to happen. That's, well, that's wrong. I was going to give you. Green Bay <laughs> heads to not New Orleans, Sean. Mm, Jacksonville. The, wait, hold on. Wait a second. I wrote down here, uh, Green Bay uh, and Aaron Rodgers head to New Orleans to take on Drew Brees in the Dome. But you're telling me this game is being played in Jacksonville? <laughs> yep. And Jameis Winston is the quarterback? What kind of dream have I woken up from? A fever dream, right? Oh and if God. there's anyone that can show up in the September heat as a home dog and know how to play the quarterback position, it is Jameson, aka Jameis Winston. Now, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, you can make a case that they're going to carve up the, the Saints secondary because after Lattimore, it kind of falls off. They've had some injuries. They don't have the, quite the cornerback depth that they've had. But the Saints moved the game uh, to Jacksonville because Aaron Rodgers struggles in Florida. Three and four lifetime record, 78-1, uh, 78.1 career passer rating. Green Bay is still without their left tackle, David Bakhtiari. If you've noticed a trend, I'm, I'm leaning into offensive line uh, play and offensive line dynamics, but really this New Orleans team, which is well coached gets up when they're a dog eight and two against the spread as an underdog since 2018. Okay. They do usually uh, not, not do well in week one and two. They're two and 14 against the spread week one and two. However, Ryan Fitzpatrick they, they're rallying for the city of New Orleans, mm. the area of Louisiana that's got destroyed, unfortunately by hurricane Ida. So uh, you know, thoughts and prayers there for the relief effort, but I think they get up for this game, Ryan. And I think the Florida September heat plays into James's favor. James needs this game. He's going to go all in. This is an easy game for green Bay to let slip away. Yeah. See, I, I, I kind of disagree with you. Actually. I, I think that uh, they're distracted. I think they can't not be That's distracted. The other angle, yeah. And I think the game that they're going to come out and destroy is when, you know, it sounds like they're going to host the giants uh, <laughs> in the first home game back in the dome. Oh, that'll be awesome. That'll I be think, rocking. I think also you're, you're, you're from a handicapping perspective, you know, this is a true neutral site game. So if you're telling me your power ra- rating has Aaron Rodgers only four point and this Packers team only four points better than the Saints on a neutral field. I disagree. I don't think the Saints crowd is going to dominate this stadium. Packers fans are everywhere. And the second that this got moved to pack to Jacksonville, how many Packers fans who live in that area and live in Florida? I'm sure there's a lot of them. They move. Yeah, no, move they'll, south. Get up, they'll get up. And so to me, as much as I like the story, I like Jameis. I think, yep. you know, the offensive defensive lines down there in, in new Orleans could be good. Could be stable enough. Like you're saying for your Eagles to maybe control a game. Uh, I'm certainly not going to bet against Aaron Rodgers in this spot. Again, what was the narrative all off season, Sean? Aaron Rodgers, FU mode. Aaron Rodgers, FU mode. We have to stand on this because I think mm. we, our first, <laughs> the first, uh, what do we want to call it? The first dance of the last dance <laughs> is week one here uh, I, I as, as they, the league I, turns. So I think Aaron look Rodgers, ahead. I, I, maybe <laughs> look ahead. <laughs> the, the, Come on. They're not looking ahead. This is a game. They, they take care of business. business They're looking trip. ahead to the Lions at home next week. They're on not Monday looking night. ahead to the Lions at home. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I get it. It's a thin angle, but I'm a Jameis in the heat. I'm loving it. This is the game that you're getting too cute on because I can see that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think the number, I, I think the number is tricky, right? When we move, think about it, Sean, you're not making these teams four points neutral. You sure you don't want to change your pick? Nope. Okay. Sticking with it. I like it. Last, uh, oh, what? we're moving on to Sunday night football. How about that? We got, we got a doozy. Sean McVay in the Los Angeles Rams, beautiful SoFi Stadium, Los Angeles, laying eight minus 425 on the money line, plus 325 for the Bears, 48 and a half 
is the or 46 and a half is the total. Uh, this is a tough game to want to roll Justin Fields out. So they are they're, they're just going to leave him behind. Uh, put Andy Dalton out there to take all the shots from uh, from from Mr. Uh, Aaron Donald on the other side. Uh, I just don't. Matt Nagy plus Andy Dalton plus that offensive line it just feels like a formula that isn't isn't something I want to take on the road in this spot. And it's also like McVeigh has a brand new sports car, has a brand new toy. The passing offense, I think, will be on display in Sunday Night Football. Yeah. And if that's the case, there's no way this Bears team can keep up. Uh, so I, I, I lay the points here. I like the Rams who have, or sorry, I like the Bears who have plenty of tape on Matt Stafford, know how to get to Matt Stafford. And yeah, granted, McVay is 4-0 straight up and against the spread in week one. But I, I think this is, I think this, and, and that's a big case for the Rams. The public's on the Rams. I get it. But I think Sunday night football, we know LA, Ryan. We know there's going to be a ton of uh, Bears fans there. I think David Montgomery is going to be able to carry the rock and keep them in this game. And uh, shout out to Darnell Mooney. You remember the last time they played the Rams? He got open a number of times. Foles couldn't get him the ball. They just need to connect on a couple of those. And Mooney had some uh, had some nice looks even in the uh, the playoff game. He dropped one that uh, you know our our boy Mitch Trubisky was like through a dime and he dropped it. I think I think they make this a game. Eight points Sunday night opening night to me is is just too much for this Rams team that's still figuring it out that didn't play a preseason that has a new quarterback for them to cover that number. Would it blow your mind uh, to learn that the uh, that Matt Stafford has a winning record versus the the Bears? No, but with, I think they with know the how horrible to play them. team. Yeah, I still they know how to play them. They're not uh, clear. They know how to lose. It. Yeah, they know how to lose to Matt Stafford. Did he cover the spread all those times? I doubt it. That's Eight true. points is too high, Kramer. It's a big number, but I think this is. I think the offense is going to uh, allow this to be a blowout. We're going to have a snooze fest. We're going to have Michael's is going to be uh, looking looking to get some second <laughs> half action in that one. All right, Sean. Monday night football here in beautiful Las Vegas in the Death Star. The Las Vegas Raiders plus four and a half. Ravens minus four and a half. My my sheet lost the money line. You had the wrong numbers in there, right? No, I'm so sorry. I deleted them. All right. Well, I'll look that up while you're talking about why you love the Las Vegas Raiders, Sean. Give me the Las Vegas Raiders <laughs> plus four and a half. Johnny Gruden. I hate the Raiders, but four and a half point home dog Monday night. <laughs> and you want to talk about Ravens. They, I, I think the Ravens legitimately are looking ahead and it's easy to be in Vegas and get distracted. I know that firsthand Ravens are five and 11 against the spread on the West coast in franchise history. You got Vegas being a big distraction. I think Darren Waller, who we have in our East fantasy league round. I think he's going to have a big game. <laughs> he has now, big games every game. I, I, yeah. And, and I think he keeps them in this game. I, I don't know. And I, I like rugs to break one. I'm slightly higher on market than rugs and this Baltimore offense at some point, you know, being completely decimated, I think is an issue for this Baltimore offense. I know they, you know, they lost uh, JK Dobbins. They've had, uh, they lost their uh, rookie receiver, They've just been really banged up. I am a little bit worried about the Raiders offensive line, bringing in a bunch of uh, new guys here. I, you know, I, I, I think the Raiders make this a game and you want to talk about rocking hostile environments. There is going to be a rocking hostile environment at Allegiant stadium. I think it's going to lead itself to a lower scoring game than, than maybe some think. And I think the four and a half points is enough to get the cover. All right. I mean, it, yeah, I guess it's, it, you can say Harbaugh took care of his business in the preseason. He, he got his cut all the winning out of the way uh, again. Uh, uh, you know, I was chalky on the Rams play. Uh, I'm going to be, ch- I think probably chalky on this one too. I, I this doesn't profile the the, Ra- the, Ra- the Raiders just don't stop the run. Like this could be an absolute blowout. I think you, I like the Raiders fantasy guys because I think they're going to be coming from behind. Remember when the Ravens came out and put up 50 on the dolphins? Yes. That's what we're going to see here. It's Big Monday night, new blowout. stadium. Fans are back. It's going to Wait, be rocking. You don't think Gruden can spoil a new stadium? <laughs> I mean, he has ruined a bunch of things. I get it. You're on the, the last two games. You're on the, uh, you're on the, the, the fade, the public side for yes, sure. And, and I, FTB baby. So I can appreciate that. I just, I, I'm not, I'm not fading Harbaugh, but he's on a mission right now. That was pre that preseason work was getting me going a mission uh, to do what we'll still figure that out. 
All right, Ryan, let's uh, give out a prize picks lineup and then go to our lock, dog, and tease. Make sure you check out prizepicks.com. Daily fantasy simplified. Use the promo code SGP, get a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Here are some of, uh, and we've given out some. There's so many. We've already. given out a bunch <laughs> in the DFS uh, show, we've been giving out some in college. Here's what I like for NFL week one. Uh, one of the many Najee Harris over 57 and a half rush yards. To me, Check. that's a volume play. Kareem hunt over 34 and a half rush yards. Co-sign both of those. I, I, I know I, I took the chiefs laying six, but I, I think he, Kareem hunt's going to get his Damian Harris over 65 and a half rush yards. Again, uh, I'm, I'm fading the Miami rushing uh, defense. Melvin Gordon under 49 and a half. I think that's high. I think Javante Williams gets a lot of look. I think they're going to have uh, some struggle running the ball. I do think it profiles to an ugly game. And then our boy, Ty God, Tyrod Taylor, 206 and a half passing yards against this Jags defense. Uh, that is comically low. So yeah, give me that. <laughs> what do you got, Ryan? I like the Tyrod one as well. Uh, I mean, if I'm going to head to the, I told I, one of the one that I, I given out a cowboy one, just so for our Cowboys fans, we don't hate you all the time. I think Zeke gets over 20 and a half receiving yards uh, because of how this game is going to be played with that pass rush uh, sticking in the receiving game. Another, another one I like taking a stab at, like I was telling you earlier, OJ Howard at 18 and a half receiving yards. Uh, again, this Dallas defense is horrible. I'm more inclined to look to someone down the, like, or a Cameron braid at seven and a half. Ooh, okay. Uh, because I think they're just going to be getting, getting yards in this game. And then another one, uh, again, we've given out so many of these, but Kyle Pitts to go over 40 and a half receiving yards in his first game. I think Arthur Smith is going to definitely call some plays just like you're saying with Quez on the Eagles. It, it seems it would, how is Kyle Pitts not going to get to 40 and a half yards? And then uh, for an under, uh, I'm going to look uh, to some of the to 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 a stud, and that's uh, I think Diggs could have a, a tough first game, mm. and so I'm going to take under on his touchdowns. Make a Fitzpatrick, and we I, didn't even really talk about him in that no. matchup, but he is a, he's a good cornerback. Okay. Under a half a touchdown, so the Dolphins uh, were crazy for trading him. I hope we've given out uh, enough. We've given out so much, Ryan. Time for the lock. Dog and tease presented by WinBet. Go download that WinBet app. What are you waiting for? Get that uh, triple play on the uh, on the spread week one. I know there's someone who wants a Cowboys plus twenty four. That's a, that actually is a really good price. Kramer, is it? Do you want to go first or should I go first? I think you should go first. Okay, for my lock, give me the New England Patriots. Oh, what? Lay in three <laughs> at home. McCorkle gets the W. And more importantly, the cover for my dog. Uh, I got a, I got a pretty nice dog portfolio Kramer, like that. that I'm feeling pretty decent about diversified. Got some kneecap biting. Ah, oh, man. This one's tough though. Cause they're, I mean, Washington football team at plus one, technically a dog that doesn't really feel that exciting. Do I lean into my hatred of the 49ers and, and go command, go, go crazy here? It feels a little reckless, but I don't hate it. Bears plus eight. They could shock people. Man, that is a, that is a juicy money line. Chicago plus 325. You know what? Wow, but, but Detroit's at home. You know what? I, I'm going to say give sure. me the Detroit Lions plus 310 to get the win and ruin everyone's NFL Hopefully. survivor. Hopefully that would be great for us for a tease, a tease, uh, three team tease, uh, which we're always on. Let's get Tampa down to two KC at a pick them. And for my final leg of the tease, interesting tease week here. I'm going to go I feel like an easy tease week to me. I'm going to go uh, WFTs up to seven, seven point home dog. Sean, like that's, that. a, that's a master class and uh, in key value, key line. Let's value. go. Uh, but pulling back the curtain a bit, you did attempt to cancel the tease uh, portion of the show. I yes. kept. Uh, don't worry, people. I uh, I stood for the tease. <laughs> uh, that will not be going away. Uh, all right, am I up? Lock. Let's go. Don't overthink it. Been saying it all all dang summer. Tennessee minus three for my dog. Dare I say? Oh no, I wouldn't dare do that. Week one. No, you're. Give me the Houston Texans, Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> I once watched him lead a masterful comeback against Ndamukong and Sue in Nebraska while playing quarterback at Virginia Tech. This guy just wins games. You're kidding me. Urban Meyer, Trevor Lawrence, rookie, rookie combo. 
favorite on the road, get out of here. And for my tease, this one was easy. Tampa down to two. Yep. Rams down to two. Okay. And for the last leg of my tease, you're telling me that all... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't want to copy your Chiefs <laughs> one. No, I, I, Why? I, That's a great tease. I... I don't want. I don't want to put too much juice on that. So I'll, I'll go. Uh, give me the Steelers plus thirteen. Okay. Um, plus thirteen. It just seems like uh, way too many. And points. maybe Week I should have went defense. them with the dog, but I, I don't know. the The home dog aspect of the Detroit Lions Ste- is just too fun. Steelers are live though. That 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 number is just too. And maybe we'll look foolish, but if you're playing that spread, you definitely like them to have a chance to win the game. Okay, Kramer, let's do it. Let's get our survivor play in, and then our uh, our five picks for the uh, millions contest. Survivor play. We haven't talked that much <sighs> about it. Tampa. Tampa Bay, right? They get yeah. it done. I mean, they're the only team that's a big spread that we're both on the same page. I just don't see them losing that opening well, night game. And here's, I mentioned it in the elevator down. If we lose the survivor contest before we get to NFL Sunday, sign up we're again. just going to buy another entry. <laughs> and so that we'll hedge our bets well, that way. Well, let me ask you this, because we, we should at least discuss the other t- teams that we were in consideration. Okay, who Ten- else were we even considering? Tennessee minus three. Okay. Seattle. Okay. I mean, I don't like Kansas, Kansas City. I wouldn't waste now. Yeah, I mean, Tennessee I like, but it, it and feels the Patriots. like maybe it's just getting a little too cute there. Let's I, just, let, I mean, the survivor, we just got to survive. Just survive. And, exactly. and, and who knows? Tom Brady's getting old. Maybe yeah. he wears down. All right. Maybe they get an injury. Let's get our, uh, the millions. Okay. Five our, picks. our five picks here, some of our favorite bets. We'll, we'll throw in our locks, Tennessee and New England. I think we have to throw Russ in there. Yeah, Seattle. Uh, and I, I don't know if the, if the lines are out for that, but either way, we'll, we'll, we'll use the, uh, the line here at minus three. We got it. We got what, it. Are, what are two other ones we like? I think we got to throw in Pittsburgh plus seven, right? It's funny. Neither of us took that as a dog, but I, I do like Pittsburgh plus seven. It's too many points, and they're a solid team. Do we ha- I mean, we, we've been talking about Houston all yeah. this time. Th- that is an onions play. We've also had a formula of four favorites and one uh, dog. We could do that as well. I mean, I, right, so I, like, other games, I like Houston, but we, we both also like Washington football team other as games, a home dog. Other games we agree on. Yeah. Tampa minus eight. Okay. Uh, Jets plus oh, four. Oh, yeah. Never Jets mind. plus four and a half. Never mind. Never mind. I forgot you can play the Thursday night game. Let's go, baby. Fading the Cowboys all around. <laughs> We're putting them in the survivor. We got to put them in the card. Four favorites, one dog. That's our secret sauce. All right, Sean. We did it. Hell all right. yeah. We did it. And uh, make sure you tune in to the live show tomorrow, counting you down to kickoff again. Live from the Win Las Vegas here in the Blue Wire Studios, kicking off 430 Pacific. Make sure you give us a follow on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. Download the app. You only have about 24 hours left to get those picks in for NFL Week 1. Download the SGPN app. Thanks again to Blue Wire and the Win for having us here. This place is awesome. We're excited to uh, make this our home in the desert. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the Money Green, and he is Ryan. All right. Go Birds. Kramer, let it ride.